We're reaching that remarkable point of time in the console life cycle where the PC space democratizes, a point where almost any modern hardware configuration is about good enough to deliver a console-worthy experience. In the previous generation, we reached that point in 2012. That was the year that the GTX 650 and the Radeon HD 7750 from Nvidia and AMD, respectively, released. Both were bargain price GPUs in the $100 range, which offered the opportunity to run just about every 7th gen title at high or ultra at at least 720p, a qualitative step up from the console experience. For $100, you could suddenly make all those titles like Far Cry 3 that chugged on Xbox 360 and PS3 completely playable and a feast for the eyes. As far as the base 8th gen platforms, and the Xbox One in particular are concerned, we've already reached that point this gen, with Ryzen-based CPUs providing very compelling integrated performance on the one hand, and the likes of the GTX 1050 raising the bar where entry-level discrete graphics performance is concerned. But there is a slight issue with this narrative. The mid-cycle refreshes, and specifically the Xbox One X. Priced higher than any other console on the market, and built with native 4K gaming in mind, the One X packs considerable hardware heft, above and beyond what's possible with entry-level PC kits. Nevertheless, between competitively priced Raven Ridge quad-core processors and and prices coming down on Polaris parts, it is possible now more than ever to build a system from scratch that's competitive with the Xbox One X. We'll be covering every angle in this build to see just how close we can get to the One X's price point. RAM 16GB Patriot DDR4 at 2,666MHz. Price at the time of this feature, $99.99. RAM speed doesn't have a tremendous impact on performance as long as your other pieces of hardware are adequate. 2666 MHz is the sweet spot as far as squeezing in a few extra frames per second without breaking the bank. Moreover, the 16GB capacity is greater than the One X's 12GB shared memory pool. GPU XFX 580 XXX Edition Price at the time of this feature, $199. Though the RX 590 came out recently, its greater performance is accompanied by higher pricing. Our aim here is to match the Xbox One X's performance. The 6.2 teraflop RX 580 is the closest analog to the One X's 6 teraflop Vega-based GPU. While the RX 580's memory bandwidth is nominally lower at 256 gigabits per second, keep in mind that the One X's memory is shared, with the CPU also needing access. Having actually had an RX 580 for some time, and looking at benchmark figures, the card hands in 4K performance that's roughly in line with the One X, allowing for 4K 30 frames per second gameplay with console quality settings. Don't let ads and listicles fool you into thinking that you need a GTX 1080 Ti to game in 4K. 580 class hardware, even the venerable GTX 970, can give you reasonable console quality experiences. CPU Ryzen R3 2200G Price at the time of this feature, $95 from about 2011 onwards, the CPU space was incredibly boring. AMD's anemic, power-hungry bulldozer and pile driver base parts fared worse than Core i3s in gaming. And for year after year, Intel, with no compelling reason to innovate, stretched out its TikTok cycle to such an extent that even today, a Sandy Bridge 2500K from eight years ago can tackle modern games just fine. 2011's the year Battlefield 3 came out. Now imagine running that on a 2003 vintage processor. That is how stagnant the CPU market was until AMD got its act together and outed the Ryzen architecture in 2016. Ryzen parts offer single-threaded performance that's broadly comparable to their Intel counterparts at lower price points, and significantly for us, they're a lot faster than the 8-core Jaguar processor in the One X. A combination of 50% higher IPC and higher clock speeds means that this Raven Ridge R3 handles in decisively better single and multi-threaded performance compared to the One X, while remaining well within our budget. Storage Western Digital Blue 1TB 7200 revolutions per minute hard disk drive. Price at the time of this feature, $48. 
Sure, a solid state drive would be a qualitative step up in experience, but this is all about matching the One X, and as storage options get cheaper, the reliable default, the 7200 RPM HDD, becomes even more affordable. You get what you pay for here. Overall performance and load times are neither spectacular nor awful, but thanks to the faster processor in our build, games will load somewhat faster than on the One X. Motherboard Asus Prime A320MK, price at the time of this feature, $59. The motherboard is a part that says a lot about your builds. As a rule of thumb, I opt for entry-level no-frills MOBOs that get the job done. With a processor that already runs circles around the One X's, there's no need for an extreme motherboard with OC options and an appropriately extreme price tag. We just need something that'll fit our processor, GPU, and RAM module without going up in flames. Asus is a reliable brand for that. Power Supply Unit Seasonic S12 II Price at the time of this feature, $55. The S12 II is the standby power supply unit for mid-range builds. The bronze-rated 520-watt piece offers more than adequate juice to power the relatively efficient RX 580 and Ryzen R3 combo, with some headroom for overclocking the 580 a little. Backed by a 10-year warranty, the S12 II has a solid record of not exploding violently. Keyboard and Mouse Logitech MK550 Price at the time of this feature, $44. Who actually wants randomly colored lights to impinge on what's happening on screen? The one thing in your build that should be emitting bright shiny lighting is your monitor. With that being said, this Logitech wireless keyboard mouse duo is more than adequate. The lack of wiring will also reduce some clutter on your desk. Xbox Wireless Controller Price at the time of this feature, $40. While keyboard and mouse input is likely how you're going to be using this system, there are plenty of console ports, the Dark Souls games for starters, that benefit immensely from having a controller. And let's admit it here, it's just more comfortable to have your paws around a controller as this is a build to offer direct parity with Xbox One X. The controller we've included is, unsurprisingly, the Xbox controller, a simple plug and play affair on PC. Windows 10, price at the time of this feature, $139. Ah, here's an unavoidable extra, the operating system. A Windows 10 Home Edition license will cost you an extra $139. Wi-Fi dongle, price at the time of this feature, $10. It goes without saying that you'll be needing an internet connection, and while our motherboard pick does obviously have an ethernet port, you'll want to pick up a cheap USB Wi-Fi dongle for wireless connectivity. This no-frills TP-Link dongle gets the job done. There's not much more to say about it. Case, Thermaltake Take Versa. Price at the time of this feature, $39. A case holds your parts together, and unless you're literally using a sealed wooden box, most entry-level cases will have adequate airflow for acceptable CPU and GPU temperatures. If space isn't an issue, a smart idea is to buy a relatively large case like the Versa for enhanced air circulation. Final price, $827.99. Well, that's a wrap. Our final price point is a bit higher than what the Xbox One X goes for, however do keep in mind that we're factoring in the cost of peripherals and the operating system as well. Take those out of the picture and suddenly, you're within spitting distance of the One X, and of course you retain all the flexibility of PC as a platform. The official Microsoft website is selling the console anywhere from $449 to $499. So in short, the Xbox One X from a purely technical perspective is much cheaper than a similarly powerful PC. And that about does it for this video. If you enjoyed what you watched and want to see more from Gaming Bolt, please hit the subscribe button. Also, don't forget to switch on the notifications bell icon next to it. That way you'll never miss any of our videos. Thanks for watching.